We're going to game two of this series. Love Nest with a 10 minute 500 VP victory in game one is going to be almost impossible to top, I think, for for A tank. I I I don't even know how Love Nest managed it. It all just happened so fast. <laughs> he was everywhere, picking up wipes like it was nothing. Love Nest playing as Soviets this game against A tank's Ober Commando West. So if A tank found game one challenging, I can't even imagine how game two is gonna go. We'll see. Stern Pioneers making their way towards the middle to uh, take territory in this area. Folks Grenadiers moving to follow up. Combat Engineers on their way south for the fuel. Conscripts. Making their way towards the center as well. Standard Standard Love Nest capping order. We've all seen this. I think on this map he does like to go tier 1, especially against Ober Commando West. So I'm expecting uh, three cons and then the second combat engineer to tech towards the M3. Stern Pioneers taking control of this territory here in the south. Prepare for orders. Grenadiers operational. Target secure. Establish defensive line. This is it. A tank is going to make an attempt at wiring the south bridge. Combat engineers will intercept, but they'll win the engagement. Stern Pioneers will win the engagement. Combat engineers retreat immediately. Mission Looks like A tank, rather than continuing to wire this bridge, is going to capture this territory, though. Just keep his resources coming in. Wiring this bridge can help, uh, theoretically, against the M3. M3 cannot crush those wire um, positions. And should Love Nest go tier 1, which I expect him to. Oh no, never mind. Went 4 cons. Maybe not. Maybe seeing that wire, he decided against it. I don't know. Hard. Hard to judge Love Nest's line of thinking. It's too next level for me. <laughs> too hard to predict. Four cons and a second combat engineer doesn't necessarily mean tier one though. Folks Grenadier is trying to hold the line in the building right here. Infantry attacking in force. Stern Pioneers move up on the flank. Folks Grenadiers moving up on another flank. Pretty nicely executed engagement by A tank right here. We'll uh, from the look of things be able to hold the line. Very tight infantry maneuvering right there. Love Ness is forced to make a full retreat out of the central village. Combat engineers doing back capping there in the north get a little bit of territory under control, but A tank will be secure in the central village and moves uh, this squad of folks grenadiers into the church. Our Kenwar for in production. I think A tank was suspecting tier one. He <laughs> he thought Love Ness was going to do it just as much as I did. He was wrong. He was wrong, and now four cons, two combat engineers appears to be the correct decision. It's uncanny by Love Nest. I don't know how he how he managed that read, but all right. <laughs> Blind countered his opponent somehow. A tank now has a useless Rakedmor for running around. He's not teched yet. Looks like he's gonna go tier two in his own base, which on Samoski Summer is. Gonna make fuel control a nightmare. I don't know how he's gonna. He still hasn't even captured this. He's not gonna have much mobility with that build. Although he just canceled, got an MG34 instead. So I guess I'm not sure what he's thinking. Lovenest has uh, guard motor, guard rifle, and shock rifle. MG34 heavy machine guns are now available. The Lovenest loadout, as I like to call it. Which he actually hasn't fielded that much in this particular volume of Starcross Kings, but in Starcross Kings 2 he used this loadout almost exclusively. Folks Grenadiers getting flamed out of the church fast. There's that retreat. Stern Pioneers are gonna get maybe a burst and a half off right there, but they didn't kill anything. Our Ken for now has to pull back to safety. Eyes up. Grenadiers 
ready. Incoming fire! Oh, taking fire! Taking fire! Engine 34 sets up just in time for this engagement. Looks like it is on the flank of that flamethrower squad. It's going down way faster than Love Ness expected. And there's the wipe. First wipe of the game goes to A-Tank and kills a flamethrower. Nice pickup right there. Apparently that green cover didn't quite apply because of that machine gun's very precise positioning. Well, conscripts look like they're uh, not going to risk. Love Ness not going to risk taking back control of that. Sector. Fresh squad of combat engineers fielded for Love Nest. Meanwhile, the North fuel falling back into his hands. And like I okay, he has gone tier two in his base. Like I said earlier, that's gonna make fuel control tough. He doesn't have any mobility of any kind, not even a Kuba wagon. No flag half track, no forward reinforce point, making Love Nest very capable of boxing a tank back into his base. He's gonna throw up sandbags here on the approach. Hulk's Grenadiers move to stop that from building. Love Nest leaves the Ghost to make pathing annoying. Hulk's Grenadiers are going to start working on the Ghost, but takes automatic weapons usually, or a Kettenwerfer or something to destroy that quickly. There it goes. He actually also upgraded with the uh, Panzer Shrek, so that helps. That helps get rid of those very quickly as well. Building's probably going to collapse eventually. The Panzer Shrek and various forms of small arms fire. It's going down. Conscripts inside, not doing too great either. Stern Pioneers trying to stick around. Get a big burst off on that squad as they're entering the building. Lots of damage. Loveness will not be able to hold right here. And the cutoff will fall back, and A takes control. Again, this Rakedenwerfer has nothing useful to contribute except for blowing up sandbags. And usually Loveness is throwing those down everywhere, but surprisingly, this map has. Uh, Pretty distinct lack of sandbags. I tried to throw one on the cutoff, but other than that, I don't see a single one. Interesting. There's tier three and tier two. Once tier three completes, might be looking at a half track of T70 or T34. I've seen Loveness go with all three. <laughs> so, on this map, last time I saw him play on this map against OKW, he went with a half track and a mortar, I think, so. That's my guess. Love Nest has, has proven difficult for me to read lately, though. Grenade onto those conscripts does minor damage. Hulk's Grenadiers will follow up by charging into close range, and I think they've won that engagement. Love Nest will retreat. A tank trying to hold on to VPs is doing an actually okay job of of holding on. He's not lost that many. It's mostly just resources that he just can't get any fuel. Love Nest already with a T-70. Queued that up at 845. That is a lightning fast T-70. And the only wipe so far this game that I've seen is one squad of combat engineers, which is something, but it's not. Ooh, that shoe mine. Nice. He almost picked up that squad right there. Nice mine. That's going to weaken Love Nest's next charge significantly. Nice reaction by Loveness, though. He was very quick to uh, get that squad to safety. Infantry support gun's been fielded. Interesting choice. All right. I mean, on this map, though, in theory, if you can get it placed very aggressively here on the bridge, you can get some nice shots off. So this is probably one of the better maps for it, but just in general, it's a difficult ma it's a difficult unit to pull off. Falsham Jaeger fielded here in the south. Mm, friendly fire <laughs> from the infantry support gun, but it does win the engagement apparently with Falsham Jaeger supporting. So that's Luftwaffe clearly chosen. Kettenwerfer just got cleared by the T70 in the middle. I guess it was getting circled to death, pointing in the wrong direction. And that, like I said, that is a lightning fast T70. It doesn't look like A-Tank is at all prepared for that. 
Panzer Strike's not available to support, and his Raketan Whimper caught way out of position. Only Panzer Strike is currently here, which leaves the T-70 for now uncountered. It will get stolen here in the middle by a spare conscript squad, and the T-70 will be free to continue working the flanks. The demo charge right there. Even if that T70 got tear. Oh my god. Oh no. A tank forced to cancel that. He probably lost, I don't know, 15 fuel or so at the point he canceled that structure. A little bit of manpower too. Of course, the most devastating thing about that is now he has to wait another two full minutes, more than two full minutes, just to get the truck back. So clearly things are not going well. T-70 moves to pick up another squad. Might wipe that. Very close to doing so. Did not chase. Because he didn't chase, Sturm Pioneers get away. Had to micro something else at that time. Or maybe he was just afraid of a raquette and in the fog. Either way, Sturm Pioneers get away with only a tiny sliver of health remaining. It's already looking like a tank may not be able to recover this game. More mines, defenses being planted in the middle of the map. T-70 is at 16 kills already. That's just more manpower bleed right there that A tank cannot afford. At least he hasn't lost his Falschermjäger squad. That's something. But his core is severely reduced. Had to feel the extra raquette morpher right there. He will be able to afford a Jagdpanzer. Jagdpanzer might theoretically be able to hunt and destroy this. If he And T-34-76 is in production as well. So Jagdpanzer, which he's purchasing, is probably the logical next move. It just might be too late. He needed it, <laughs> needed it a while ago. And because he wasn't able to take even one fuel point for even a few minutes of this game, he's just so behind. That T-70 had a massive window of opportunity to work the flanks, pick up wipes, and shut A-Tank down before his composition was able to evolve. Sendy area artillery being dropped right here. That is shock rifle chosen by Love Ness. He's had shocks running around for a while, chased off his folks from years earlier. And Shock Rifle versus Luftwaffe is a pretty um, pretty common matchup, I think, for this patch, especially on urban maps. Shock Rifle gives you the Incendiary Artillery, which is a really useful tool on, really useful tool for clearing out Raketenwerfers, and Luftwaffe Ground Forces tends to rely on Raketenwerfers a little bit without a doctrinal anti-tank solution, and being a, a little bit on the munitions hungry side, Falschermjäger abilities, Jagdpanzer, Goes in pretty hard on the T-34 right there. 
Oh, and of course, airborne assault. So Rakettenwerfers. Rakettenwerfers are probably the backbone, honestly, of m of most. Oberkommando West. Anti-tank solutions because uh, Panzer Shreks are just not as spam spammable as they once were. You used, you used, your core used to be a Panzer Shrek blob, now it's more about Rakettenwerfer blobs. I think because you tend to need your munitions for other other doctrinal things, whether it's G43s, mines, grenades, whatever it is. Panzer Shreks just won't get the job done anymore. Folks, grenadiers are not the invincible units that they used to be. Enemy There's another Engage wipe. The the Nice bundle grenade placement. A tank finally manages to convince Loveness to retreat from a grenade into the retreat path, and Loveness takes the bait. Eats a huge bundle grenade right there. Still doesn't wipe the squad though. Artillery will push a tank Send off the cutoff. And the triple cap will continue. Only 200 points remaining. The Yag Panzer is looking for opportunities north. I think he might find one here. Gets the shot. Panzer Shrek needs to fire one more time. Oh, that thing's so quick. Vet 3 T70 scoots back to safety like it's nothing. Panzer Shrek just wouldn't fire. Folks Grenadier squad is forced to retreat. Folks Grenadier is making their way towards the cutoff. Also have to backpedal a little bit from T-34 defending this area. Has 25 kills. Model losses right now. Actually, surprisingly, even... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I always am surprised to look at the model losses in games like this and be like, oh wow. <laughs> actually pretty even does manage to prevent that steal the grenade although he's forced to spend munitions he probably doesn't want to right there Folks, grenadier are on the line assembled and ready Shock troops will be forced to retreat from this engagement. The triple cap keeps going. KV-8 on the field now. Anti-tank rockets on the field. Not even sure what Loveness is doing with that KV-8. I think he's trying to get that Jagdpanzer to expose its rear to a T-3470. Oh, oh no! Look at how nuanced that baiting was. <laughs> Somehow managed to convince that Yag Panzer to drive over that mine with the T-34 right behind it. Flawless execution there by Loveness. Yag Panzer only gets one shot off before being destroyed by a T-34-76 and a KV-8 is annihilating everything in the base. There is another Raketan Warfare on the field right now though, so KV-8 at least will get pushed back, if not destroyed right here. Wipes those folks grenadiers. Yak Panzer goes down. Meanwhile, the Bet 3 T70 is working on infantry in the central village. Antag knows he can't recover this game without his Yag Panzer. 
even with his Jag Panzer, didn't look recoverable. So there you have it. Short and sweet series. Love Nest takes it. No problem. 2-0 is yet another challenger. Well played, Love Nest.